tonight on Channel 6 News at 6. A new vape shop is opening directly across the street from Midway Middle School. Hear what the district has to say next. Then police in Temple are on the hunt for a suspect after a man is shot and killed in a Walmart parking lot. George Herbert Walker Bush was the most gracious, most decent, most humble man that I will ever know. Plus, Texas welcomes back President George H.W. Bush as the political icon is laid to rest. Channel 6 News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Imani Payne. Chris and Leslie have the night off. We begin tonight with the first check of what's been a rainy day across Central Texas. Meteorologist Zach Scott is standing by with the details. Hey Zach. Hey there, money. It's not going anywhere. The soggy conditions we saw today stay in place tonight and through your Friday, Friday night and could linger into Saturday. A chilly 52 Waco, 53 Temple, 55 for our friends down in Cameron, 56 Hearn, lower 50s to 40s as you work your way back towards the northwest. Getting closer to that cold front, 40s will slowly make their way southeast depending on how quick the front moves through as we go into the overnight hours. Looking here at Doppler Net, got a couple of flood warnings here that have been uh, issued by the National Weather Service for one of the rivers there around Gatesville and same thing down there in Williamson County. They think we could see some of these uh, rivers and streams get up towards flood stage with the heavy rain expected as we go through Friday and Friday night into Saturday. So if you live near some of these, you may want to think about that. You you know if you live in a low lying poor drainage area, you've seen the water build up as we've had past experiences, so you should already know those things. Keep an eye on them as we go through the next 24 to 48 hours. Everything falling out there is very light. A soggy commute for us here on Thursday evening. It'll stay soggy as we go through the next couple days. Flash flood watch out for the southeastern two thirds of central Texas. Three to six inches of rainfall will be possible. Live look in McLennan County. It's wet. It's chilly. 52 degrees. Temperatures will try to fall to the upper 40s, low 50s, depending on how quick the front moves through and we'll be in the steady 40s tomorrow. We'll time it out. Go hour by hour in a couple more minutes. See money. All right, thanks, Zach. Today we laid our nation's 41st president to rest at his presidential library. This morning, a funeral service was held in Houston before his journey home to College Station. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that We're here today in the house of the Lord to say goodbye to a man of great faith and great integrity, a truly beautiful human being. We rejoice, Mr. President, that you are safely tucked in now and through the ages with God's loving arms around you. Because our glory, George, was to have had you as our president and as such a friend George Herbert Walker Bush was the most gracious, most decent, most humble man that I will ever know. He would be the first to host intense horseshoe matchups among family, secret service, uh, or any willing head of state, while encouraging trash talk like power outage if your horseshoe is short, or Woodrow Wilson if you're long and your shoe hit the wooden backstop, and it's the honor of a lifetime to share his name. God bless you, Gampy. Until we meet again. He may be out on that rock boat we built together. And as the end depends on the beginning, and as we say our goodbyes, I want to invite you to pray in honor and thanksgiving in celebration of this man that we know and love, this man we adore. And shortly after being elected, President George H.W. Bush was approached about having his presidential library at Texas A&M University. It said that the president fell in love with the school and the military culture the university provided. Channel 6 News reporter Jasmine Caldwell is live in College Station at the George Bush Presidential Library, where the president will be buried on the grounds. Hey, Jasmine. 
Well, Imani, one of the most powerful moments was seeing our 43rd president, George W. Bush, hug his brother Jeb outside of the library that not only carries their father's name, but is also his gravesite. Now, earlier today, we were able to see the motorcade as it came past the library, and Imani was very quiet, very somber moments. We weren't able to speak as the motorcade was coming by, and to honor the president, the U.S. Navy. Navy conducted a 21 strike fighter aircraft flyover. The public was not allowed to be here at the library. This is where the Bush family had their privacy as the president casket was carried to his grave. Now, George and Barbara Bush are both buried here with their daughter Robin who died of leukemia in 1953. There will be guards here standing over George Bush's grave. The public is able to visit the gravesite starting on Saturday morning. Reporting live from Texas A&M, Jasmine Caldwell, Channel 6 News. All right, thanks, Jasmine. And for all of our coverage on the 41st president, head to our website, KCENTV.com. There you can read our heartwarming story about a boy inspired by George H.W. Bush to become a pilot. Now to Hewitt, where Midway ISD is reminding parents to talk with their kids about the effects of vaping. The move comes after a new vape shop opened right across the street from the middle school. Channel 6 News reporter Cole Johnson is live outside the shop now. And Cole, how are parents in the school district responding? Hey, Monty, I spoke with some parents in the area and Midway superintendent. And to say the least, they're not very happy about this new shop opening directly across from Midway Middle School. Now, it's set to open its doors within the next two weeks. And right now, Midway ISD is including information in their newsletter on the impact vaping can have on younger students and telling parents what to be on the lookout for. Vaping devices usually contain nicotine, which for the CDC says can harm brain development in teens and warns the devices can look like flash drives, pens and every uh, other everyday items. Now, I spoke with the owner of the shop and he says he does not allow underage people into his store, but Midway ISD superintendent says even the store sign can make an impression. As you walk out of the school of the middle school, that is the first thing that, that, that you can see is the is vape. And so um, I think that sends the wrong message and uh, sends the wrong message to kids, but particularly uh, seventh and eighth grade students. Uh, that is a very impressionable age. Tonight at 10, we're going to be hearing from some concerned parents as well as the owner who says that stores like these can actually have some positivity in the area. Reporting live in Hewitt, Cole Johnson, Channel 6 News. All right, thanks, Cole. A Hewitt man charged with capital murder was found guilty today, but the verdict may get thrown out because of a mistake prosecutors made. Channel 6 News reporter Andrew Moore was following the trial all day long. So, Andrew, what happens next? Found guilty of hiring a hitman to kill someone who robbed him, but immediately after the verdict was read, his defense lawyer moved for a mistrial. In an unusual circumstance, the judge is holding that verdict in limbo while the case, while he reviews case precedent. So what happened exactly? Well, prosecutors were instructed to redact parts of a video interview with the defendant before the jury saw it. Prosecutors showed the redacted video to the jury during the trial, but showed the unredacted one today. Judge Matt Johnson directed the jury not to consider part of that video, but a defense attorney Randy Schaefer later objected, saying a man shouldn't be found guilty when the prosecution didn't follow the rules. Prosecutors would not talk to us today, but Schaefer did and said this wasn't the first time the judge had, judge had ruled out evidence brought by those prosecutors. He would kept out so much evidence because she had violated discovery orders, hadn't played by the rules that she thought she needed to pull a fast one to get by on a case with flimsy evidence. If the mistrial is granted, Schaefer says he expects the district attorney will start the case over from square one. The man accused of pulling the trigger, Keith Spratt, has not yet been tried. Amani. All right, thanks, Andrew. Well, still ahead on Channel 6 News at 6, a former Kuwaiti officer credits the late president with saving his life. His story after the break. We are live at the HEB here in Woodway for Camo Santa. We have, look how many toys we have so far. Camo Santa, come on in. Johnny Mojica, real quick, how important is this for uh, HEB to partner up? Oh, this is extremely important for us to make sure that we're taking care of our service members and their families, and especially their children around this time frame. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's truly our duty to make sure that we're, we're giving back to those who, could, who, to those who protect us uh, day in and day out. We'll hear more from Johnny Camo Santa. Welcome back. As President Bush lied in repose in Houston, hundreds of people lined up to pay their respects last night. 
Each person had a reason to stand for hours to walk past the casket, but no one more than one man who told his intensely personal story to reporter Boyd Huppert. We're building memories. Each person in line had a reason. Back in the day. The former campaign volunteer. Yeah, but I don't want them to know. I want them to remember this. The grandma, grandkids in tow. He was what I want to see again. Each had a reason to stand hours in line to walk past a casket, but none more than Fala Bebahani. This is the least I could do for President Bush. Fala is Kuwaiti. The least I could do. A military officer. This is me. When Saddam Hussein's army invaded his country, landing Fala in an Iraq prison camp, where with a small smuggled camera, he snapped these photos. Risky picture. A risky picture. All of them were risky. I knew one of them were risky, really. You never knew when they would execute you. Fala credits President Bush and U.S.-led coalition forces for saving his life. Well, this one actually was in the Red Cross bus, and this is me, and these are my colleagues. The last picture in Iraq. Fala showed us how he passed the time for eight months. I just keep going like this. Smoothing rocks he'd find in the prison yard. This one he wore around his neck tonight when he finally approached the casket. Far right on your screen, Fala bows his gesture of gratitude. It, it was a good chance to say thank you. I wish I did it when he was alive, but at least I could do it now. Five hours he'd waited in that line, still stretching into the night. But what's five hours when you've been given a lifetime? What a moving story there. And we have more after the break. Stick with us. The holidays are upon us, so Channel 6 and HEB are teaming up for our Camo Santa toy drive. Channel 6 Sports Director Nick Canizales is at the One Way HEB with more. Hey, Nick. All right, Amani. Hey, listen, this is the response that since we've been here has been incredible. Look at everybody. We have Camo Santa, we have Rhonda and Johnny from HEB. Selena bags are a hot item right now for Christmas. Camo, just talk about how important is this to, to especially for the military kids uh, for this Christmas? Well, it's really important because if you know our soldiers protect us, they sacrifice for us, and we have a lot of soldiers at Fort Hood. So every toy that's donated goes to a soldier's child on Fort Hood. So it's a, it goes to Santa's workshop. Johnny, HEB on a grander scale. You guys not only do stuff here in Central Texas, but around the state of Texas, always giving back to the community. Absolutely, it's you know it's our duty to make sure we're taking care of our Texans. Uh, tonight we are in a temple uh, feeding a little over 5,000 meals to our community and. You know, we support in larger and bigger ways. We, we like to help out with education, the environment, uh, of course, military, and uh, and really, you know, we give 5% of our pre-tax dollars to uh, to organizations to, who to really make a difference in Texas. And so uh, it's just really our honor to, to make sure we're, we're taking care of our community because, you know, we live here and, and we work here uh, and, and we're helping here. We appreciate everybody. This is one of 11 drop-off locations. Also, our 12th is at our station. You can also have monetary donations. Dropped it off in downtown Temple. But now, we are live here at the HEB in Woodway. Nick Kenazals, Amani, we'll send it back to you in the studio. Great stuff. Going to help out a lot of families there, Nick. Thank you. Well, let's go ahead and send it over to Zach Scott. Zach, how are things looking outside? Hey, I'm surprised they even have any of those Selena bags left over. Those I know. Things were going up. Welcome back. As we lay President George H.W. Bush to rest, we take a look back at his journey to be with his beloved wife, Barbara. We're here today in the house of the Lord to say goodbye to a man of great faith and to honor his noble character, his life of service, and the sweet memories he leaves for his friends, his family, and for our grateful nation. He left a simple yet profound legacy to his children, to his grandchildren, and to this country. Service. Undoubtedly, when the last words are written on him, they will certainly include this, that the fulfillment of a complete life cannot be achieved without service to others. George Herbert Walker Bush was America's last great soldier statesman of men who believed in causes larger than themselves. Last Friday, when I was told he had minutes to live, I called him. I said, Dad, I love you and you've been a wonderful father. 
And the last words he would ever say on earth were, I love you too. A great and noble man. The best father a son or daughter could have. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. As history will faithfully record, he became one of our nation's finest presidents and beyond any doubt, our nation's very best one-term president. right back after the break. Stick with us. Have a good night. We'll see you at 10.